Now at 10, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. The so-called Hawthorne fire continues to burn in Berlin tonight. Thanks for joining us for the Fox 61 News at 10. I'm Brent Harden. And I'm Sarah Sanchez. This afternoon, our crew saw smoke pouring from Lamentation Mountain State Park. Also, flames shooting from the treetops. Fox 61's Alexa Farrell just heard from officials uh, for, uh, on their latest update. She joins us live in Berlin now. Uh, Alexa, what do they have to say? Yeah, they're continuing to ask people not to fly drones over the area. It may be tempting to do, but they're saying every single time that someone does fly a drone over the fires and tries to get a better look, that stops operations for these people. The helicopters have to come to the ground, and that takes about 30 to 45 minutes to get them back up in the air so they can continue to pour water over the site. Today, they say there were two drones, three planes, and two ATVs. And they say, although it didn't necessarily hinder the hop operation, it did stop them from making better progress. It's been 72 hours since the flames were first noticed on Lamentation Mountain in Berlin, and now the fire lines have expanded a bit. Neighbors are concerned, but officials say they're monitoring and extra protections have been put in place. Sprinklers designed for wildfire applications. They're fed by hydrants up there, positive water source, and uh, what they do is they wet that line between the houses and the, the fire. They say another flare up Thursday evening caused the fire to expand. It's a bit of a combination between the wind and the drop in the temperatures that that inversion um, creates favorable conditions for that fire growth. Officials say air support has been focused on the north and south sides of the brush fire. The flames have now spread across more than 107 acres, which is more than originally estimated. It doesn't necessarily correlate to fire growth. Uh, you know, the fire growth has been pretty minimal. Um, if you look at it on a map and spread wise, we're, we're looking pretty decent there. Fighting a fire of this magnitude has not been cheap. Officials say with the helicopters assisting, the price tag is over $100,000 a day. They help us to recoup uh, cost associated with the response to this event. Uh, so there's no guarantee that we'll get that, but we're going to make every effort to uh, get that federal dollar assistance in as this is becoming a very expensive operation. So far, there have been more than 120,000 gallons of water dumped by aerial assistance. And those flames again were seen by neighbors as they went a little bit closer to their homes, making them just a bit uncomfortable. They say as neighbors look up into the mountains, you will not see crews on the ground as it's not safe for them to be up their feet on the ground during the night hours. But again, tomorrow morning, they will be back at it. And as they're down here on the ground looking up, they're keeping a watchful eye and they do have protections in place. No evacuation at this point, but protections are in place to ensure if there is an evacuation needed, they will call for it. In Berlin, Alexa Farrell, Fox 61, Connecticut's News station. All right, Alexa, thank you for that update. Funeral services are now set for the Weathersfield firefighter who died in a crash while responding to that brush fire. Visitation for Robert Sharkovich Sr. will take place Sunday afternoon at Farley Sullivan Funeral Home in Weathersfield. The funeral is scheduled for Monday morning at the Cathedral of St. Joseph in Hartford. Weathersfield Public Schools will be closed that day. Sharkovich, known to many as Sharky, served in Hartford for 24 years before joining the Weathersfield Volunteer Fire Department. In in 2023, he was among several first responders who were recognized for their bravery after saving a person from a burning home. His good deeds extend beyond what he did as a firefighter. One person who knew that all too well, Weathersfield Fire Assistant Chief Anthony Dignati. He has cancer, and just recently, some members of the department shaved their heads in solidarity. First person that sat in the chair was Rob Sharkovich Sr. He was the first one to volunteer to have his hair shaved. He's just been so compassionate and supportive of me in, in my journey, but my journey secondary right now. Sharkovich is survived by his wife and four children. Weathersfield Fire Chief Brian Schroll released a statement today thanking the community for their words of support during this tragedy and saying, in part, quote, I cannot begin to describe how devastating of a loss we encountered on Tuesday, not only as a department, but the entire community. The overwhelming words of support on this social media platform is staggering. I could not go another day without making some kind of outreaching statement to all of the comments. All I can say is thank you 
uh, each and every one of them. Your Weathersfield Fire Department is strong together, and we will get through these times together. Well, neighbors in Berlin are impacted by the noise and smell they say are coming from the Bright Feeds waste facility. Fox 61's Kayla Cade spoke with people in Berlin who have had to deal with this disgusting smell, and Kayla went out there to smell it for herself. The smell is different for everyone, but to me, it smells like sour vinegar. Families who live near the facility tells me this has been going on since last September, and they are concerned with what they are breathing in. There's a smell lingering in the air near Philaway in Berlin. It's like a, a rotten, yeasty bread type of smell. It's, it's hard to explain. And people who live and work in the area say it's coming from a food waste processing company called Bright Feeds. I've come out to just get my keys or something and I, I forget that it's out here and then I have to hold my breath because it's like, it's just terrible. Sean McLaughlin is a commercial truck manager at the Task of Ford dealership. He says when customers come to look at car options in the parking lot, they are thrown off by the smell. They end up sometimes not even wanting to stay here very long. It is even nauseating for his coworkers. We had a couple of employees this morning when they got out of their car, it was pretty strong this morning, and they felt like vomiting before they even got into the building because of this smell. McLaughlin says this has been going on for more than a year. And on top of smelling the strange odor, he's also noticed soot covering their cars, and he believes it's coming from the facility. They say that we're not breathing stuff, but if you look at these cars and it hasn't rained in weeks, you can see like a dust type of haze stuff on her. There's something in the air. Ryan Malloy, who lives about six miles away from the building, hears a vibrating sound coming from it every day. You, you literally think you're going mad. You think you're losing your mind. The noise forces Malloy to sleep in a different bed in his home. I'm sleeping in the spare bedroom on this side of the house because it's more insulated uh, from bright feeds. If I sleep on the master bedroom, which is uh, exposed to bright feeds, I get woken up time and time again. Um, so it's kind of sad. Malloy says he smells the horrible odor as well and just wants to know if what he's inhaling is safe. We just want the data so that we can be comfortable that we're okay, that our health's okay. All of these issues led to Malloy starting a petition in February. Petitions now over 700 people. Um, we've had some town meetings on it, but at the, at the end of the day, we just want it fixed. I would wish somebody could help us. <laughs> Malloy tells me that they initially did not want Bright Feeds to shut down, but now they do because there hasn't been any tangible solutions. Now, we did reach out to Bright Feeds for a comment, but we haven't heard back. In Berlin, Kayla Cade, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. All right, Kayla, thank you. Time for a uh, first look at the weather here. And uh, boy, for several weeks now, it's been this good news, bad news story. The mm -hmm. good news being is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Bad news mm -hmm. is that every day we go without rain just makes that fire danger worse. Yeah, and I guess the worst news here is it's not even in the seven day, is it, Rachel? No, I mean, we're going to stay dry across the board. Just an unbelievably dry stretch of weather. So that brush fire risk that we've been talking about, unfortunately, we're going to go on and on like a broken record of about it in the days ahead. One thing that will change are the temperatures, and we saw that a little bit today. It was still warm, but temperatures were much cooler than they have been pretty much all week. And look at this low temperatures tonight in the 30s to right around 40 degrees inland and low to mid 40s for the Connecticut shoreline. Is this odd in October? No, this is what you anticipate seeing, but it will feel a little strange, I think, compared to recent warmth. Here's a look at temperatures across the state right now. We're in the lower to middle 50s for most upper 40s though in Torrington and right now we're anywhere between 5 to 11 degrees cooler than we were at this time yesterday. Still a breeze out there and that has been persistent gusts up to earlier today 30 miles an hour. Now we're down to about 20 and the good news is I think the winds will continue to relax as we head through the overnight and the wind will not be as much of an issue heading into the day tomorrow. So while the brush fit fire risk remains high, at least we won't be fanning the flames. Low temperatures tonight in the 30s heading into the day tomorrow. We're looking at highs in the lower to middle 60s. So similar to today, maybe we'll knock three or four degrees off the high temperature if you're comparing today and tomorrow near 60 in Groton, Mystic and Stonington and high temperatures in the mid 60s from Cromwell down through Higginum. We'll talk about the changes for the weekend, a reinforcing shot of cool air and then the extreme warm up that happens again for later next week. Lots to get to coming up. 
Rachel, thank you. Well, a man is dead tonight after the motorcycle he was riding crashed with a car in Plainville. It happened just afternoon on Route 72 in the area of exits 4A and 4B. Troopers say the motorcycle rear-ended the car before crashing into a metal guardrail. The driver of the car was not hurt. The motorcyclist has been identified as Peter Binaz of Plainville. If you witness the crash, give state police a call. We now know the name of the man killed in an industrial accident in Berlin. Police say 66-year-old David Dion died when he was trapped under a payloader. This happened at a recycling facility on Tuesday. No <laughs> charges have been filed. OSHA is now part of the investigation. And people across Connecticut are hoping their signatures will make a difference in helping to lower electric bills. Scott Pearson from Monroe started a petition online. That petition went viral, getting 68,000 signatures from people all across the state, all with the goal of getting rid of the public benefits portion of a household's electric bill. The signatures filled 1,500 sheets of paper, and names are listed of people across Connecticut outraged over the increased electric bills. Pearson says he will deliver the dictionary-sized documents documents to Governor Ned Lamont's office. People are really suffering. I mean, they are really, really suffering, and especially in the summertime where I actually had, I know, a person 90, 90 years old. Uh, there were, it was like 95 degrees out one of that really hot summers in August that we had, and she wouldn't dare put on the air conditioner. It's putting up people all over the brink. You know, they can't afford food or they can't afford gas or whatever. So um, that's, uh, hopefully, I'm bringing this to uh, light with uh, Governor Lamont. Now, Pearson hopes the document will convince Governor Lamont something needs to be done as soon as possible to help struggling families afford their electric bill. A vigil for the seven-year-old who died in a house fire will be held tomorrow night. The fire happened one week ago in Norwich. The mother and two other children were also <coughs> in the home. They escaped and survived. Multiple fundraisers have been, helped, uh, have been held to help the family. We have more information on those at fox61.com.